What's up guys, it's Drac, and it's time. It's time for the top five Friday we've all been waiting for. I've been talking about it, I've been teasing it. It's time for top five Friday, homemade slash 3D printed Nerf Blasters edition. Now, I'm gonna tell you real quick why it took so long to make this one. Reason number one, they keep making more homemade blasters. 3D printed blasters, there's a new one it seems like every other week. Like, and they're always cool and they're always new and shiny and you never know if they're gonna be a hit or a flop and you gotta wait and test it and print it and make one. I love it, I love everything about it. I love that we can make blasters in our basement consistently on either sides of the country, on either sides of the planet. It is so cool, 3D printing technology. Additive manufacturing is the future of rapid prototyping, period. So it's tough for a couple of different reasons. Reason number one, where do you draw the line? What is a completely homemade blaster? Is it made of 3D printed parts exclusively? Are you allowed to buy motors, switches, etc.? Like, where is that jumble line? So what I've kind of decided is, it has to be a fully 3D printed shelf for this video, more or less, and I'm gonna make exceptions starting off immediately, but a uh, fully 3D printed shell has to be relatively well known in the hobby, like has to have had at least 10 of them made and has to be like ultra turbo level sweet because it's the top five. And then for the top three, they're all so popular and they all have such huge fan bases. And most importantly, they are all three made by very good friends of mine. I decided to stagger those, not by personal preference. Uh, the bottom three are by personal preference, but the top three, are not only the top three on the list, but are also arranged in order of sales. It seemed like the only fair way to list them. So like in order of like units sold, I figured that that is the best objective way to determine their popularity. So with that said, let's launch into our honorable mention. So before there were 3D printers and back when homemade essentially meant it was made out of pipes and springs and clothespins and epoxy, uh, there was a little company down in the sunny island called Explorer, uh, run by my uncle Hing, who is both a designer and manufacturer of everything at Explorer. He CNCs literally everything. He CNCs it out of block Delrin most of the time. So this literally, you could like kill a bear with. It is very heavy, it's got great heft, it's got a secret hidden panel that pops off here to access the internals, but the main blaster itself is an entire piece of Delrin that was turned into this pistol. This one is one of a kind. He's made a few different versions of this kind of mechanism. This is like around the time that jolts were becoming popular. He made his own kind of superpower jolt and he makes his own darts, of course. And Explorer's just a really, really cool, really niche company. I know that it takes a lot of flack in the hobby, but the complaints are always about price. And frankly, if the only thing that you can complain about with a company is how expensive it is, then like you could take your tears over to Rolls Royce and roll because that means they're clearly doing something right. So uh, it was my tremendous honor when Hing made this for me. It is two of a kind. There's this version and then there's a white uh, version of it that I think is living out its life somewhere down in Australia. But uh, this is the Drac pistol. Uh, and I just wanted to point out, it felt wrong to do a top five homemade blaster and not at least acknowledge that like Hing and Explore are the birth of homemade blasters with full shells and full CNC construction. Now he's never gonna take a step back from reductive manufacturing to do 3D printed stuff. I know how he feels about it, but I wanted to thank my Uncle Hing for the Drac pistol. I want to point out that it still delivers the hits, uh, especially with X darts. It is ultra crazy level sweet. And while it's not on the list because it's not something that you can make in your basement, it just seemed like the origin story was worth telling. So uh, with that said, thanks Hing, and let's move on to number five. Coming in at number five, we have serious Springer performance in the form of the Chimera. No, not that Chimera. This Chimera is a special edition kind of caliber and remix, but ultimately has so many unique parts, utilizing a long shot style plunger tube, utilizing a complete bullpup catch design and magazine release, uh, that it kind of has earned its own sort of category. And that's why it comes in at number five. I had to do a little bit of tweaking to it, but even without a scar, like mine is still shooting actual lasers down the hallway. In fact, I really don't want to be hitting my drywall, so I'll shoot into my soundboard here. But uh, 
a really, really cool homemade blaster. Bullpup is where it's at. Everybody knows that I love bullpups. One of my dream rifles is the MDR by Desert Tech, and that's just a crazy powerful bullpup, which is exactly what the Chimera is. So coming to us from Northeast Designs, like I said, long shot plunger tube, completely unique mechanism up here, and mine just happens to be bespoke for katanas. Now, katanas are, of course, the, uh, the magazine made by Jet Blasters down in Singapore, but the really cool thing about katanas is, I know we're already talking about three printed fully uh, manufactured in-house blasters you can make your own katanas this is a uh, katana uh, magazine which comes to us out of the west coast and does the same sort of performance but it can match your blaster no need to buy these although they are injection molded I don't think that there's too terribly much wrong with them you can get a solid body construction and the same kind of performance out of them just buy one foam blast magazine spring I think and that's all you have to do to get these rocking and rolling but the chimera itself has a very comfortable sort of uh, control center here. The only thing that I would complain about is that the mag release is back here. It's very exposed, this whole area. So to get in there, you really have to commit to it uh, with your offhand. Now, that's the advantage of a bullpup is that all of that is very easy to access, switch out, and get back in the game. But you can just hear them whistling down the hallway. It's such a sweet build. Uh, mine's, of course, in drat colors. That's going to be a theme for a lot of these because some of them I didn't make myself. The maker sent them in uh, either for this video or realistically for a dedicated review video because I love trying the new stuff so that I can make content like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to humble brag and say that nobody is better qualified to talk about these things because I don't think anybody else has played with all of them. And I've been fortunate enough to get that opportunity and I just... I, I love all of the little niches and differences. So number five, it's big claim to fame is that it's serious springer performance. It has the second highest FPS on this list and it's bullpup ergonomics, which is so sweet. Um, Lots of different options for foregrips, lots of different options for optics up top. He went with all metric and all, uh, all hex at the same time for his uh, his hardware. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. It's just a little bit harder to source than some of the things on this list. So if you ever wanted to maintain one of these and I haven't had to maintain mine, uh, that is an option. He also, I think, pioneered using carbon fiber for the priming bars, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well. But carbon fiber for priming bars is an extra little piece of sexy that uh, not a lot of these blasters have the availability to, uh, to implement. So that's our number five blaster the Chimera from Northeast Designs. Let's move on to number four. Our number four slot is shared between the Pigeon from Mr. Heathpants and the Falcon. Now, these are birds of a feather. Get it? They flock together. And while dual wielding them would be a lot of fun, I think that they're better matched with their likeness. And that's because the main separating difference between these is actually the magazine that they take. So you'll see here, if we drop the magazine out of my pigeon, it takes those aforementioned katana magazines, which can be 3D printed. It also kind of exploded on me a little bit. And then if we drop the magazine out of the Falcon, you can see that it's taking the new talons by, uh, by worker. Uh, I get all of mine from Foam Blast, which has some of the fastest shipping and best customer service in our hobby. Uh, highly, highly recommend picking them up from there. But uh, that's enough about the magazines. That's the primary difference between the two blasters. Now, the performance difference between the two blasters is while they're both powered by itty bitty FTW wheels, uh, and they both have cages bespoke for that, and they both use a very similar uh, reverse switch trigger where you're pulling off of the switch and then pushing down and in. Uh, these are about as compact as these form factors can get. I haven't had a lot of luck with my pigeon. I'm gonna be honest, I burned out one of the honey badgers. I started trying to get it to run on fang revamped. Then I had to redo the trigger. Then I had to redo the cage. And by the time it was all said and done, the Falcon came out. So I started playing with that platform instead. Not because it's necessarily inherently better in any sort of way. It's actually more expensive to make a Falcon. And we'll get to that in a second. But because the Falcon, while not having that sweet, sweet Desert Eagle form factor that the, the Desert Pigeon does, but because the Falcon, without having that sweet, sweet Desert Eagle sort of form factor, uh, 
It just was easier to construct for me. It was also using predominantly metric hardware, but all of it was easily sourced on McMastercar.com. The hardware for this is all pretty standard Nerf hardware, actually. You're actually setting screws into the plastic, whereas this has little heat sunk things that you put machine screws into. This seemed to be a little bit more of a refined design, and then it has one more trick up its sleeve, which we'll get to later. Now, I wanna fully acknowledge that this came first. It's ultra sweet. There's more of them in existence, which is why it's using the older magazine's geometry here. I also really like that it's a Desert Eagle form factor. Like, I'm a pretty big Desert Eagle fan, um, but, um, it's clunky, and while it is easily holsterable and does deliver the hits, this is single stage, which means this is not. So one thing that I would personally add to the Falcon design is another sink screw somewhere up here as this top slide is held in place exclusively by one down here. But fortunately for our video, that means that I can tilt this up. You can get a quick sneak peek at the double FTW wheels inside, holding this thing together putting together a dual stage flywheel setup. And I think that it benefits severely from that because it means that while the darts still have to peel off of this magazine through the angled grip up here and down into the flywheels, while the first one aligns it, the second one really delivers the hits. And that shows, so I can't fire this one for you because it's in the middle of repairs, but I can give you the basic concept of what is a handle fed magazine, half dart dedicated mini wheel pistol that looks like a pistol. This one looks like some sort of future tech laser pistol, whereas that one is Desert Eagle form factored. But our number four blasters are sweet because this is an easily holsterable, easily quick drawn, very snappy dual stage trigger. So a half pull takes it off the switch and starts it screaming at you. And then the full pull fires the darts. So when you're rapid firing from cover, it looks a lot like You have to be pretty deliberate with those trigger pulls. Normally, it looks a lot like this. I'm having trouble getting my battery to fit exactly the way that I want it to. I think that realistically, it's gonna come down to bending some uh, natural bends in, not the pack itself, but the wires coming off of the pack, and then it'll just sit in there very comfortably as is it. it's pushing back a little bit. But it's got this really funky release, so whereas the pigeon, you push down on here to drop the magazine uh, from the handle. This, you pull back like this. So it's fully ambidextrous. You can do it with either hand like so, just like the pigeon. But uh, I also originally, I was pulling it like a charging handle and that's not necessary. You've got ultra sweet iron sights built onto both of these, although they're far more elegant and blended into the top rail on this one. The pigeon kind of has them set in like this, which I guess means that if you had like a formal sight adjuster for a deagle, uh, you could you could do something like that, but super duper cool. I like uh, I like both of them very much. Just the idea of a mag fed ultra compact half length slinger is pretty sweet. Now, uh, the Falcon is more expensive to make. You need twice as many FTW wheels, which are pretty pricey, and then you need twice as many motors, of course, but other than that, it's the same basic filament cost. It's the same basic hardware cost uh, with a little bit more in the Falcon for some of those heat set bits, um, and then one switch, a little bit of wire, and they, uh, they'll operate off of more or less the same battery. Now, you are overvolting those uh, Honey Badgers, which are 2S motors, 2 3S, to get crazy, crazy high RPMs to torque these darts and the rubber heads through a dual stage high crush setup. Oh, you can't beat it. it. It really feels like a funky plinking sidearm. Can't wait to take this to the ADL because it seems like it'd be so easy. Like the old uh, Tipman chaser, spider chaser. I don't even remember. Do you guys remember the super small caliber paintball pistols? They were so cool. It was so hot to like leave your marker behind cover and then peek out the other side and pop people. Absolutely loved them. Can't wait to take the Falcon out for a test flight. Anyway, that's enough talking about our honorable mention through four. Let's get into the, the heavy hitters. The They've sold more than 100 units each blasters. Very cool stuff. All right, so coming in at number three, we have the blaster that's closer to home. But before we do that, how many licks does it take to get to the center of brushless technology? One, a two, -hoo. three. 
Alrighty guys, so this is the third iteration or the FDL3 and it is it is a sweet foam dart slinger. So uh, the primary advantage of this is the brushless technology. It's the only blaster on the list utilizing brushless. And while I'm a big fan of my original brushless blaster, Try saying that three times fast. Uh, from Eli Wu, the Echelon, which was sandwiched into a rapid strike housing. This is a fully 3D printed shell containing more or less the same tech. Now, that comes with everything from a hot swappable like easy to change all of your settings from preset buttons on the side to a complete dial and screen setup up here uh, from one shot, two shot, three round burst, as well as a gnarly full auto on this guy. And you can have it printed in any color you want with a litany of different foregrip options with a bunch of different magazine options now. And I think you can even get it with a rev trigger. Jank. A few more different options like custom side panels, whether you want something that'll hook into your, uh, your magnet holster or you need something that says something special to get your cool kid points. Whatever your flavor is, Jackie and Jesse will make it happen. And that's another thing that makes this one really special. This is the closest to home on the list. Like Jackie and Jesse are uh, SE and C people and they've been putting these together for I think a little over two years now. Like these are serious, seriously cool blasters. We have more of them down here than anywhere else because proximity matters. And it's led to a cult following, which has, wait for it, the best name. So combining the rev and the pusher into a single trigger pull was pretty controversial at first, but Jesse did stick to his guns for the longest time. And it's actually a very responsive, very snappy uh, set of controls. It also keeps things really simple. You have a dual mag release you can release up here, or you can push this paddle built into your, uh, your grip, and that'll do the same thing. But let's go ahead and throw this in. And then, like I said, it's very easy. You could do this with a preset, but switching it into full auto is as simple as switching from burst all the way to F locking that in and this is going to be pretty gnarly like this is i think more than anything what people fall in love with it's all the power of a totally torqued out rapid strike with none of the work you just pay your money and one appears and it's really just stupid proof like rapid strikes are tricky not a lot of people do three switch most people settle for two switch and you're still like you can get slightly higher fps out of a uh, a rapid strike i think just because the yoke can handle more being injection molded but like this out of the box is no laughing matter. Like a serious, serious dart hose. And while not the highest rate of fire blaster on our list, like definitely, uh, I think they're neck and neck. It's super duper close. So the FDL3 is crazy sweet. I highly recommend it over the FDL2. But unlike the FDL2, this is closed source. You could make an FDL2 in your basement. So while I only have an FDL3 to show you right now, the FDL2 is equally as sweet and essentially a carbon copy of this with, in my opinion, a slightly less refined form factor, a slightly less comfortable set of ergonomics, but that's easy to download. You can buy all of the hardware, all of the software. I think Jesse even publishes all of his code and updates to it. Like that is still a completely open source project and there for anyone in the community to take advantage of. The FDL3, you're gonna have to have a few Benjamin to pocket but uh, overall just a serious contender an amazing option especially for people who don't like to build their own stuff like there were kit options in the past but now that everybody switched to the three platform it shows up you pull it out of the box you love it you take it to wars you keep it in a case you know who you are <laughs> and it will serve you very, very well. Like I said, a veritable dart hose. For full lengths, I am strongly considering picking up one of the half length versions just to tinker with myself, but I'm waiting on a special number because Jesse does do something that I am a big believer in, which is he serializes them. So of course mine is number 13 because it's lucky for me. So that is the FDL3, uh, really, really love it. I guess if we've gotta come with some complaints, like my only complaints would be closed source and a little bit front heavy in pistol form. That said, it kind of needs it to pack a full onboard computer and two fully sized brushless motors into its nose. But I absolutely love mine, and as an added bonus, mine's all filamentum wrought of wood and steel, and so it still has that fresh timber fill smell to it. I can't get enough of it. All right, let's move on to number two. So I did a video on number two recently, and that's because I built it live on my Twitch, but this is Out of Darts Jupiter now. Uh, Out of Darts is another good friend of mine. 
detecting a pattern yet, guys. And Luke's entering into this space is no joke. Coming in is more stem toy than blaster. It is a serious contender. If fully compact, highly ergonomic, full auto monstrosity is your flavor, as long as rival is your round of choice, then Luke is here to deliver the hits. So you can throw in a seven or a 12 round. They just click nicely into place. There's some detents inside here that hold them in. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is what you get kind of lost in. Now, with the ability to rotate this ring to shoot around corners as a cool feature, uh, barring that, it's about as simple as it gets. You pull the trigger and it unload and it just it just unloads. Like we'll fire straight up so that you guys can see what a monstrosity is in terms of rate of fire, but here's seven darts in. Essentially the speed that it takes that gear turner to take them out of the magazine. Like that is crazy cool. Then you unload like so throw a fresh one in, and you can stagger them. It doesn't always have to be just a dart hose. But that is, of course, what it does very, very well. Now, I love the Jupiter. I love it most when it's in proton pack mode, which is where you throw a whole backpack of rounds on, and you pull a tube through, plug that tube in instead of a regular magazine, find some way to power a blower inside the pack, and then you go to town with thousands and thousands of rounds at your disposal. But absolutely in love with the Jupiter. And the fact that you can build one yourself for only $100 is insane. And when I say build one yourself, I mean you get everything but the battery. An entire set of internals, hardware, full prints done gorgeously on Luke's like full Prusa printer farm. And he provides instructions that are very clear, very easy to use. So this tiny little handheld machine is an ultra high selling, like really, really cool offering that he can't even keep in stock when they're fully made. There might be some in stock right now. Uh, and I'm going to link to every blaster on this list in the description box below. But I really recommend doing yourself a service, building it yourself, learning how it works, getting that fun out of it in that way. In my mind, it's half Lego set like it's such a cool project to put together and an absolute dream to play with afterwards plus you get that real sense of ownership that like you made it because you did the beating heart of this is actually quite simple and Luke has an hour-long instructional video which shows you everything inside but it's two switches two flywheels three motors here one of which powers a tiny tiny little worm gear that kind of shoots the balls off of the magazine and into the flywheel setup high crush so that you get decent modified rival performance out of it and I know that it's essentially like a Zeus full auto cut down however uh, it's crazy sweet and it comes in whatever color you'd like it does lose a couple of points for being closed source, but I don't really think that that's to its detriment because you can buy it fully like disassembled in kit form and Luke's selling a lot of the components individually. Like you can buy the cage and the bits and bobs if you wanted to make it yourself. So you could put this technology in pretty much anything. I might be working on something cool that takes advantage of that. But uh, overall, the Jupiter is a wonderful, lovely little compact stem toy. And I'm a huge, huge fan of it. I've only built two of them so far, but I'm very much looking forward to building it a twin and attaching them both to a proton pack of my own. But I'm gonna have to get one of those like crazy kill star coffin backpacks for it because I think that that is the only thing that I would want to use to contain like my bag o balls. So anyway, that's the Jupiter, a potent pocket sized powerhouse. Uh, as long as rivals your performance of choice, uh, this is a serious offering. And I think that pretty much everyone at this point has dabbled in it, picked one up and done something really cool with it. The versatility of something this compact is certainly to its merit and I think is the result of a lot of its popularity. Like just very, very neat. I've seen people strap custom back ends on. I've seen people paint them in various, very cool ways, like uh, a really affordable little tinkers kit, but uh, it can't compete with our number one blaster. In fact, nothing on our list can compete with our number one blaster because it's a performance focused juggernaut a decade in development. Let's talk about the caliber. So before we talk about the juicy, juicy Caliburn details, we've got to go back in time and talk about the Caliburn's origins. So we've got to talk about everything from crossbow performance to plus bows, but I'm going to focus and talk over some footage of me using Bloodborne, which is a fully homemade, like uncontestedly beautiful and efficient nerfing machine made by my good friend Nerfomania. The bottom line is nerfers figured out that full length springers with 
plenty of barrel and massive plunger volumes were where it was at. This derives from a blaster called the crossbow, which has one of the largest internal, like longish draw uh, plunger tubes in our hobby and is just an absolutely gorgeous shell that has plenty of room for integrations, plenty of room to attach extra power to it, either around it or inside it and gives us like a serious, serious platform to work with. However, like all things desirable, they quickly became expensive and we were led to make our own version. So a guy named Captain Slug made the Plus Bow, which is a fully homemade version of this. And then it did not take long before my good friend Dennis, our Nerfomania, started cranking them out uh, pump action style. So everything from the pump action snap to eventually the pump action rainbow and eventually leading to this blaster that you're watching me decimate with on screen called Bloodborne. Predates the video game. However, just like the video game, it absolutely decimates people who are not familiar with it. Real quick, we're gonna get to the caliber and eventually, I just wanted to talk about this. It's an honorable mention. It's also been very, very popular, uh, but it fit in better here because it's essentially just a mini burn. It's a little itty bitty caliber that's dedicated to shooting half-length darts from half-length magazines. It's cross compatible with both katanas and talons because Slug is an absolute madman and refuses to exclude anybody, which is the real spirit of nerf. So, I, I love it. I love everything about this compact little pea shooter. I love its inherent power. I love that you can see that the darts are chambered inside it if you're using the PETG barrel. And I love that it's open source, which is something that Slug shares with all of his creations and all of his blasters. And it's not even just the more modern ones. He's been doing that since back in the plus bow days. All of his stuff has always been fully documented and easy to access for anybody with a desire to machine things. And that's really what Slug is. He's a mad scientist who never sleeps and shares his work with everybody. And he is very, very deserving of our top spot in top five homemade blasters because there are over a thousand Caliburns out in the world and they're insane. So the Caliburn has been through dozens and dozens of little revisions and iterations. It's had everything from monolithic magwells to takedown magwells to dedicated magwells for rival, mega, and all sorts of other different calibers of full length like 50 cal and half length 50 cal darts. It's the juggernaut. It can't be contested. Like it's a full length Springer with a decade of legacy behind it that just happens to be accessible and printable with an easy to get hardware kit this is old school Nerf made available for literally anybody with a 3D printer and a desire to turn screws. It's insane, so it's powered by threaded rods and one KXX spring, either K25 or K26 or K14, and it delivers performance anywhere from 130, if that's what you need it to be with a tiny itty bitty spring, to up to 400 with extended barrels. And since all of this stuff is made of the same stuff, essentially mixing and matching, changing and updating is as easy is printing off the latest set. It's crazy how popular these things are and it's well deserved. Like this is the most powerful blaster on any nerf field back in the golden age made modern. So you can print it in any color. You can pay Slug to print it. He's got a little bit of a waiting list. I know that Worker just picked up the rights to print their own out in southern sunny China, and they're gonna be delivering them in a slightly different all-metric hardware set, but someone in virtually every country has jerry-rigged the hardware that's available locally to fit the Caliburn, and since the step files are all public and there's no like commercial licensing for them, you can tweak them and change them into whatever you need them to be and accommodate any sort of hardware that you have available. And again, the performance is no joke. Like, in a world where being able to hit your opponent across the field is ultimately all that matters, the Caliburn does that and then some, and it does it well. Like, it delivers serious high accuracy, high FPS shots all the way across your average nerf field and then some sometimes. Like, serious, serious performance such that I had to design my own parts for it. I decided that it needed the most amazing trigger geometry and a metal plunger to match which meant that I had to put a sear in between them. So uh, it is the full platform for my project tooth and nail and I couldn't be happier with how that turned out. But ultimately I couldn't be happier with how compatible the caliber is for any sort of stuff. I've seen people printing these things out of carbon fiber. I've seen every scope under the sun on them. I've seen covers, I've seen risers, I've seen custom stocks, custom grips, like all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff coming out of these. And they're beautiful, highly ergonomic rifle size builds that again, just like, they remind me of NIC back in the day. And that's the coolest thing about them is that you can take a full powered, 
full-length Springer. And you can use it in virtually any game type now. They are truly, truly ubiquitous. So I do want to talk about this one really quick. It's another full filamentum build. This is mint, this is wood, and it turned out very, very lovely and still has that amazing uh, timber fill smell to it. But uh, all of these were printed downstairs on my Prusa and my CR10 affectionately named Renfield and Igor. We'll be talking about both of them in a dedicated follow-up video as soon as this video gets enough likes. We'll be talking about 3D printing for the Nerf hobby, how to enter it, what to avoid, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. So Igor handles the really tall prints, and then Renfield handles the very fine prints, but uh, just a really, really cool platform. Captain Slug has a full website on it. Multiple people have done videos on it. You can find a Caliburn for every ammo type in every situation in every war that you might want to participate with, but I absolutely love them. I take one to virtually every atomic game, every SCNC war, especially our 14 plus wars, and I have started seeing them on NIC fields as well, where they are very at home with the blasters that we've been cherishing for years and years and years made out of PVC. In conclusion, I want to give a massive thank you to every creator on this list. Every creator on this list has not only supported my channel at some point in some way, but is also supporting the community and the hobby and the sport that I love by making incredible things. Like the more things that we make and the more people we have pushing our hobby forward in whatever direction it might be, the better off we all are. The rising tide truly raises all ships and everybody who's made anything on this list, whether it be the people who designed them originally or you sitting at home who's cranked out one or two or maybe even all of the things on this list, like thank you. Thank you for keeping like Nerf alive and thank you for making Nerf an amazing hobby to be a part of and thank you for <laughs> protecting us from the, uh, the always caring but very watchful eyes of the mothership with blasters that we can build in our basements at any point. This is no longer just for specialists anymore. As always, much love, Nerf on, Drac out.